I want to know something from your childhood that you thought was okay, but now realize is really, really bad. So when I was a kid, we would play this game where one kid would have a ball and uh, everybody else would try and tackle that kid and get the ball from him and basically just like beat him up and uh, so that they could get the ball and then or whatever it was and survive as long as they could with that ball. And it was an awesome game. I loved it. And uh, then a couple years later, I suggested we play this game. Um... And, well, people weren't too fond of the name, and uh, that is when I learned that, uh, well, it was called Smear the Queer, so, yeah. I used to be terrified of flying on planes, and my parents would give me a cookie when I was little, or a little treat before I'd get on the plane. It wasn't edible, so... I have been waiting for this moment. Okay, so just for some context, me and my brother were really good friends with our neighbors when we were growing up. And their dad's name was Tony. Tony was always a 12 pack of Bud Light Deep by like 10 a.m. every morning. Constantly blaring some nickel back out of his garage. Covered in tattoos, piercings, but all around great guy. Love him to death. I still talk to him. So one day we're over at Tony's house jumping on the trampoline. I was like seven years old and I just got my ears pierced. And I noticed that my earring had fallen out. So I run and grab Tony. I'm like, hey, we have to find my earring and put it back in before my piercing closes up. This man takes out his fucking titty ring, his ring out of his nipple and hands it to me. I'm like a seven year old girl. I'm like, oh, and he's just like, here you go. Here's, here's my nipple ring. Put this in your ear. What the fuck? So when I was in primary school, I was about nine years old, my teacher used to put the tables together and I would stand on the tables and I would perform for the rest of my class. And I used to always perform Lady Marmalade and I would do every verse, including Little Kim's rap. So I'd be nine years old, performing for a bunch of other nine year olds, spanking my own bottom whilst rapping along to the lyrics, we're independent women, some mistake us for whores, but why spend mine when I can spend yours? And the teacher would just be at the back of the room clapping along like, oh, this is really appropriate. And the funny thing is, I thought that's how you made friends by performing because no one in primary school even knew what gay was. And on the first day of high school, I thought I was really struggling to make friends. So I stood up and sang Lady Babylon. Wouldn't recommend that in high school. So this happened when I was 13. I was living with my dad at the time and my dad's always been like a pretty big party guy, went to the clubs almost every weekend and he was pretty good about either leaving money for food or just having food in the fridge because he almost never came back on the weekends. But one time I come home, it's the long weekend, he's not home and I'm like okay whatever he's probably gonna come back later. There's no money and the only thing in the fridge is sauces and a cantaloupe. So I'm calling him, calling him, calling him. He doesn't pick up. Eventually his phone dies and his phone stays dead for the next three days. And so for those three days, I ate that melon. I rationed it out for three days. And finally on the third day, I run out of melon and I'm freaking out. Eventually I call his girlfriend at the time and I tell her, hey, I haven't seen my dad and there's no food in the house. And she freaks out, goes to find him. He had passed out on his friend's couch because he had done too much E and he had just stayed there for the last three days. And we always joked about it and called it the melon story. Um, and I always thought it was funny until I told my friends and they were like, bro, that's neglect. <laughs> okay, so when I was a kid, I'm talking like literally probably like five years old, six years old. I used to sneak into the kitchen at night when everyone else was sleeping and drink a bunch of wine <laughs> from the fridge. And I didn't even really know what alcohol was. I just knew that I wasn't allowed to have the wine. So I thought it was just like this forbidden juice and it made me want it more because it was forbidden, you know? And so, yeah, I would drink it all the time and then I'd just go back to bed. And um, I'm surprised I didn't die from like alcohol poisoning at that age or something. Um, I definitely probably have brain damage from it though because my memory is awful, but uh, yeah, crazy stuff. <laughs> I have this doll that I bought at a flea market when I was like four years old. This doll is the type that flips over to reveal another doll underneath. But I can't show you because it is racist. Did I know that at four years old? No. Did my parents know that? Yeah. They still let me buy it because all I saw were two beautiful dolls. I absolutely loved this doll. Both sides of it for my entire childhood. My parents let me take this out of the house. And of course they explained to me, hey, don't flip it over because 
it's not good. How they explain that to a four-year-old, I have no idea. I just remember I wasn't supposed to show anybody the other side. Just to imagine that she was a princess that could shapeshift. You know, just change her appearance. I used to sleep with it every night and I'd flip it over every day so that a different side of the doll could enjoy being on the bed. I love her so much and I I see her years later and when I pull her out of the box I'm like oh my fucking god what? My dad's a narcissist so there's actually a lot that I could talk about in this video but one in particular was that whenever we would go out to eat anywhere especially like McDonald's or something I was not allowed to order what I wanted. Like I always had to eat what my dad chose for me. And that included stuff like onions on like my burger and like what kid likes onions, but I had to eat them anyway. Um, and it wasn't until I was sleeping over at a friend's house that her mom took us to go get McDonald's. And she looked back at me. She was like, Laura, what do you want to eat? And I had no idea what to tell her. And, ugh. I look back and like, that's just sad. That's really fucking sad. <laughs> okay, so I was like three or four years old. I grew up in a really small town. So we had this weird like preschool hybrid pottery class thing. And the teacher had a baby boy at the time. Um, and she would, you know, have him in class most days. And she'd have to breastfeed him when he got hungry. And... I don't know if she thought we thought it was funny. I think we thought it was funny at the time, but she would, she would chase us around the room, like super soaking us with her breast milk, like all over us. When I was in elementary school, we had this one lunch lady. Her name was Miss Kathy. I feel like that was every lunch lady's name. She was always the one to tell us to quiet down. She was really fucking scary. And to be honest, she probably hated children. However, there were days that she was nice and she would come sit at your table. Not because she liked you, because she wanted some of your food. She would sit and share your snack with you whether you wanted to or not. Also, every day that we went outside for lunch for recess, we would play dodgeball. And it was boys versus girls, which honestly seems very horrible now that I think of it. But Miss Kathy would always play on the girl's side, and she would pelt the fuck out of us boys. And not with a soft dodgeball, with one of those rubber fucking balls you use for kickball. She would walk up to the line and bash a kid in the fucking face. There was no remorse. And for some reason, we loved it. We wanted her to play with us every day and bash us in the face. I went to a Catholic school, and when I was in middle school, I started coming home with a lot of bruises on me. And my parents got really fed up when they found a bruise in the perfect shape of a handprint on my back, so they contacted the school. However, the school refused to do anything because the kids hitting me either came from families that donated a lot of money to the church, or they were hitting me because they perceived me as gay, which I was, but I didn't know it at the time, and it's still not okay. Um, so rather than reprimand the kids beating me up, the principal would pull me out of class every now and then and teach me self-defense in the hallway. My dad had multiple DUIs, so he had a breathalyzer in his car to start in the morning, and every morning he would make me go out and start his car before I could leave for school. He taught me how to blow into it, taught me how to do everything. My dad would bring me on staycations where he'd drive us um, to a hotel that's about 15 minutes away from our house and leave me alone in the hotel for about um, like 20 minutes at a time, and then you come back with a lot of money. Um, every once in a while, but probably about once a month, he would um, make me pee in a cup, and then he would take the pee, bring it elsewhere while he was on probation. Not only was he an alcoholic, but he was also an addict, so um, freshman year I broke my hand and had to have surgery. When they gave me pain meds for after my surgery, he took them away from me and told them I didn't need them, but he just used them for himself. Once a week he would make us go with him to his friend's house and he'd make us sail in the car while he went in for about 20 minutes with three little baggies and then came back with nothing but cash. There's a lot more, but I don't really have 